What is up, Packers fans? I am Ross Uglum, the publisher of Packer Report, and welcome to the very first episode of The Daily Draft, brought to you by Badger State Brewing. This is a very exciting endeavor. I'm very, very grateful to Andy Herman for providing me a platform, just a little idea he and I came up with, and I'll, I'll break it down real quick for all of you. Uh, we will be doing one episode a day from today, Monday, January 29th, until the NFL Draft. Uh, every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I'll be taking the weekends off, but you will be getting prospect primers. You will be getting Mock Draft Monday. You will be getting a Combine Reaction podcast or video. Uh, you will be getting positional previews. I'll be bringing in Andy occasionally. I'll be bringing in other experts and other Packers people uh, to the fold, maybe uh, someday or, or someday soon, maybe kind of reforming what we're doing from a background. This is obviously uh, my NDSU studio, and that brings me to kind of who I am. I would guess most of you uh, listening to this have heard me talk about the Packers before, but my name is Ross Uglum. As I mentioned before, uh, I am the publisher of Pack Report, still under the umbrella of 24-7 Sports. I, I also um, produce a Bison Report, which is 24-7 Sports coverage of men's basketball and football at North Dakota State as well as Jays 24-7, which is uh, men's basketball at Creighton University. I've been writing about the Packers for a very, very long time, starting in 2013 at Packers Talk, um, then getting promoted to Cheesehead TV and eventually being chosen um, by 24-7 Sports to take over the mantle at Packer Report. Uh, was an original cast member at the Pack-A-Day podcast before stepping away, but I'm back. I'm back in a way um, that kind of works for me and, and my family and, and back in a way that I really get to do what I love to do. Um, which is talk about the Packers and, and certainly talk about the offseason, talk about the NFL draft. And uh, we're going to have a, a, just a ton of content. Like I said, there will be two episode days, not a ton, not a ton, but um, there will be two episode days. But you are going to get Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, an episode on the daily draft. Um, every Monday, we will do what we're going to do today and do a mock draft Monday. Many of you are Hopefully familiar uh, with my work over at Packer Report and the Mock Draft Monday, which is where we do a couple things. Uh, first of all, uh, I choose every year a kind of level of the draft or a round of the draft to cut off, uh, whether the Packers maybe have, uh, it, it's usually round four or five. I, I won't uh, go past six and I, or excuse me, I won't go past five to round six and seven. And I usually won't cut it off at three just because um, there's more team building to it than that, and and that kind of is not something I love. But um, this year it's pretty simple. Uh, the Packers have picks in round one. That's one pick. They have two picks in round two, round three, and round four. There's a little bit of disagreement kind of around the compensatory pick formula nerds that Alan Lazard may only garner uh, Green Bay a, a five, and it would be the first comp pick of round five. And I might change kind of the way I do things. In fact, I probably would go to a five-round mock just to, to grab. But uh, for right now, the the five that Green Bay would have had, and they've they've done awesome in round five. I mean, truly awesome. Dontavian Wicks, um, certainly TJ Slayton, Aaron Jones, and, and that's not all. I mean, you can go back. They're about as good at picking in round five as you can be. And it's, it's kind of an odd skill to have. But, I mean, to get guys like Aaron Jones, like TJ Slayton, like Dontavian Wicks that – profile as as quality starters if not more i mean jones is a pro bowl level back i think um pro bowl level is not something out of the question for dontavion wicks i think he's got a long way to go but um his athletic profile and what he was able to do you know you kind of want to marry athletic profile to the nuance of playing the position uh his ceiling is extremely high and then tj slayton to be a starting nose tackle starting quality nose tackle in round five is, is really impressive um, a little bit of a tangent there. So what I'm saying is uh, with the Packers picking seven times in the first four rounds, I will do uh, a, a four round mock every Monday. The other thing that I do, and it's not to be mean to people or criticize people. And oftentimes I praise them is I go around, I look at everything. I look at draft wire. I look at pro football focus. I look at the draft network. I look at ESPN, uh, CBS sports. The list kind of goes on and on. I also look at Packers specific sites. If people are producing, like if someone at Cheesehead TV is doing a, a, a Packers mock, that's four or five rounds. If someone at, at uh, Lombardi Avenue is doing a Packers mock, that's four or five rounds. I get in there. I kind of give my thoughts. Um, but one of the big things for me is uh, kind of addressing the national mocks. And I always tag those guys, you know, which I think is fair. Uh, so they can come and see kind of what somebody who has been studying the Packers and how they draft for as long as I have uh, can maybe take a look at what I think. And, and maybe they don't care. Probably a lot of them don't care. Uh, 
but just understanding uh, one big one this year, and, and it's it's something we'll talk about is the super big offensive tackles. It's just not something they've done. Uh, they haven't taken an offensive tackle that they planned on playing at offensive tackle, who's over 320 pounds in forever. Um, they haven't taken an offensive tackle that they planned on playing at offensive tackle, who's uh, six seven since like 1996 in John Michaels. Um, they love their six foot six or six foot five, 310 versatile offensive linemen that can move in their wide zone scheme. But even uh, when they're doing more pin and pull stuff with like Wall and Rivera and, and running some more traditional eye stuff with Amon Green, they still didn't draft these mammoth offensive tackles. And you're going to see Amarius Mims, you're going to see JC Latham, you're going to see huge tackles mocked to Green Bay that just are are not fitting kind of what they do. Um, you'll see wide receivers mocked in round one to. Uh, Green Bay. And, and I was one of them back when they had a premium pick and they could have gotten potentially a Dunze neighbors or Marvin Harrison Jr., which they can't. I mean, that's not going to happen without a trade up. And um, if the Packers weren't willing to take a wide receiver in round one, I'd be pretty darn shocked if they were willing to trade up for one, especially having, you know, the four studs that they do, the four young studs that they do now in uh, Watson and, and Reed and Wicks and Dubs. Uh, I think they're not, excuse me, Dobbs. Um, I think they're probably not in the market unless it was one of those Super, super elite guys. And there's a couple of positions like that. We'll get into that as I kind of um, go through some of the prospect primers and some of my thoughts where, you know, if you're going to kick Bo Melton and Malik Keith off the roster, you better be a pretty good wide receiver. So after what round do you just stop looking at wide receiver? If you're going to be kicking um, Colby Wooden off the roster, you better be a pretty decent defensive lineman. At what point do you stop looking at defensive linemen because they're kicking Colby Wooden off the roster and you just – used a fourth round pick on him. And, and and I would say he played fine, not the level that Carl Brooks played, but he played fine. So is there a line where you kind of stop looking at defensive linemen? We'll look at a lot of those things. We'll look at historical wants and, and needs of the Green Bay Packers. And, and we'll do um, that, like I said, every day, Monday through Friday. Couldn't be more excited about it. Okay. With that said, we'll be linking, hopefully in the description to Mock Draft Monday every Monday, uh, and, and we'll be linking also to the Packer Report draft guide or the Green Bay draft guide powered by Packer Report. That's something very exciting um, that we're working on. But what we're going to do for the podcast side and ultimately for the video side here is um, really quick run through my mock. And I'm going to set uh, usually using pro football focus. I think it's the fastest. I think it's the best. Um, uh, PFN has a good one. Fan speak has a really good one that I contribute a, a big board to. But PFF is super easy. Some of the trade stuff is easy to do. We'll do that. And then I'm going to look at one of the mocks, not, not all six or seven or eight. I'm going to look at one of the mocks uh, from a national writer from a, a draft-specific platform like a draft network or a draft wire uh, here on the show, kind of go through the Packers' picks in in very similar way that I do on Mock Draft Monday. So we'll do that. We'll do my mock. We'll do that. And then we'll, we'll get out of here. And that will be our, our Mondays. Uh, a lot of prospect primers, like I said, we're going to do some combine reaction, uh, going to do some positional previews top to bottom with some guests. Those will be longer pods, but super excited to bring you guys here the daily draft. All right. So um, visitors or listeners or watchers here on YouTube, bringing up my screen here, going to go ahead and select the Green Bay Packers and enter the draft. We're not going to trade this first time around. No trades, no matter. Um, I, I've been in a situation where I've wanted to trade down quite a bit at the top of the first round. I've mentioned before on X or on Twitter that um, I think really prospects like 25 through 70 are the strength of this group. I have solid round twos on a lot of guys as far as my grading system. And I'm going to get into my grading system a little bit more in episode two when we talk about our first prospect. Um, that show will be a little bit longer than normal prospect primers just because I'm going to tell you kind of where I'm coming from uh, on some things and, and where I grade guys and how kind of my grading system works. I try to tailor it to be similar to the NFL where um, I might have 19 or 20, you know, I might have five or six blue chip grades out there. I might have 20, 21, 22 first round grades out there. I'm not going to give out 32 first round grades just because there's 32 first round picks, but we won't get into that a ton. All right, let's get this bad boy started. Uh, hopefully this is easy for you guys to see, and hopefully it's not too terrible for the podcast listeners. Uh, this first pick is easy for me. Uh, Rake Straw is one of five corners that I really like for the Packers in round one. If he's there, I'm going. Um, it's, it's the two Alabama corners. It's Nate, it's uh, the Wiggins kid from Clemson. It's Cooper DeGene, and it's Ennis Rakestraw Jr. And Rakestraw is particularly exciting to me because I'm happy to maybe look at an outside corner in round three or round four 
and maybe play with the idea of Rakestraw inside. He's a dynamite, dynamite tackler, um, has played inside a little bit at Mizzou, has played big-time football in the SEC. I think he could be installed at nickel immediately with Jair on the outside. And even if you don't get an additional corner, um, you have Karen, Carrington Valentine versus Eric Stokes then in camp for the other corner spot. I think that's a very decent place to be. We're going to go ahead and take Ennis Rakestraw Jr. Okay, um, this is an interesting spot now with, um, you know, one, one I, I don't love any of these guys as far as the um, wide receivers are concerned. They're not in the group. I, I think I'd rather have Tez Walker. Uh, Xavier Leggett's a very interesting dude at like 230. Um, kind of a Traylon Burks type or, or sort of a get, get the ball in his hand and get out of his way type. Um, not something the Packers have a ton of, although Wicks is pretty good after the catch as is Reed, but not a lot of guys breaking tackles. Tucker Kraft would be their number one tackle breaking pass catcher. I don't think that's particularly close. Not a guy I'm, I'm really looking to add. Uh, really, it comes down to Kalen Bullock versus Chris Jenkins for me. And for me, um, with what I've added in a from a tackling standpoint, potentially at the star or the nickel position, I'm going to go with the guy that doesn't tackle as well, but is an elite, elite coverage player. The San Francisco 49ers absolutely torched the Green Bay Packers uh, in the middle of the field. They picked on their linebackers. They picked on their nickel. They picked on their safety. You're not going to pick on Kalen Bullock. He is a very, very good cover safety. Needs to get better as a tackler. If he was a tackler, he'd be a top 15 pick. And I mean that. I mean, that's why you're able to get him um, in round two. Here I'm in a tough spot. I have a very extremely solid, and I don't know what pro football focus doesn't like about this kid. I think he'll be one of the guys that we break down in prospect primers. Chop Robinson, uh, edge defender out of Penn State. I have a one on him. Um, going back and looking at my board and, and all, all, all things on the table, I probably would have taken Chop um, over Bullock. I mean, that's where he is on my board. At this point, it's it's really hard to um, hard hard to pass up. The only thing is I see Tavondre Sweat there. Um, Tavondre Sweat is the number one defensive lineman that I would add to this team. He's not my number one rated defensive lineman, but he is a physical marvel. Uh, you look here at Tavondre at um, and, and just the height weight, man, 6'4", 362. That's your run stuffer. He's got a little bit of wiggle against the pass. Um, I like him about as much as I liked Jordan Davis uh, and, and, and really, really got some great grades from Pro Football Focus. However, you do or do not um, like their grading system, they love them. At 6'4", 360, um, I would add him to the Packers. You have plenty of sub rusher types right now. Devondre Wyatt is not defending the run. He's just not doing it. Uh, excuse me, Devontae Wyatt, not Devondre. Um, he's not defending the run at this point. Colby Wooden is 270 pounds. It's ridiculous to ask him to defend the run. And Carl Brooks is a converted edge defender. It's not great to ask him to defend the run. So this is a really interesting um, choice between Chop, who who I, you know, especially with the the, the Kingsley or the J.J. Anikbari injury, I would probably add. Right now, though, I'm going to go with need. I'm going to have, uh, especially on early downs, I'm going to have Tavondre Sweat and T.J. Slayton out there. And we're just going to shut down people's run game. And if he can get to be a three or four or five sack a guy, uh, excuse me, sack a season guy, that's just tremendous. So Javondre Sweat is uh, who we'll be taking with that second, second round pick. So we have not addressed the offensive line at all, have not added a receiver, and have not dealt with the edge defender situation uh, where, where, where um, you know, the, the Enic Barre injury kind of is – it's there. It's it's to be noticed. Uh, this is an easy one for me, and, and I'm 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 very interested in this kid. Uh, have him on my board after watching a little bit more, uh, and, and really really like him. He has great great coverage grades from Pro Football Focus, and he's long. Uh, Dwight McGlothern out of Arkansas, and, and now I'm going to be certainly done messing around with the secondary for the rest of this draft. He's that outside corner, that later corner. Um, I see Jerry and Jones. He's a nickel, and I'm sure real quick here we're going to see Mikey Sainerstow, or maybe he just went. Jerry and Jones and Mikey Sainerstow are really specific to the nickel position, which is something that I hope the Packers do. But I'm very happy putting a guy like Rakestraw inside, getting a guy like McLothern here. He's six foot two, um, has that that longer body type that Jair doesn't from an outside corner perspective. Happy to throw him in there and uh, really see what he can do in that competition with Carrington Valentine and Eric Stokes. There's one guy that you can actually see on the screen that I'm really hoping is still available at 91. 
and he is, and I'm going to take him. And that's my RB one for this class. And that's Blake Corum. Um, Jonathan Brooks gets some medical clearance. I'm going to, I'm going to probably be there. He's, he's a better back in my opinion. Uh, but I love Corum. I know he's a compact guy. Aaron Jones is a compact guy, catches it well. You saw that in the college football playoff, runs hard and is better at pass protection than maybe a guy of his size uh, deserves to be. Going to go right in here with uh, Satoa Laumea. That just screams Green Bay Packer. I know he's kind of right in their, their wheelhouse from a size standpoint. You look here, 6'4", 3'11". That's got Green Bay Packer. 6'4", 3'11", from the Pac-12 has Green Bay Packer written all over it. He, you know, for our intents and purposes, will be the uh, Packers mid-round offensive lineman ad that can play four spots and, and will, you know, go right into the development tree as they probably say goodbye to Royce Newman uh, this offseason, as, as well as potentially David Bakhtiari and Yash Nyman. So Satoa Laumea and, and expect probably an ad in round six or seven as well. Last one here, really looking um, for an offensive excuse me, really looking for a linebacker uh, is, is the, the thing I would like to add. Uh, would not ne- really staring at Drake Nugent as well. Um, he's got Scott Wells written all over him. He's a shorter center, but he's really, really good. He can't play any other spot but center. But if he's your backup center now and and you allow Josh Myers to leave in a year, I don't think that's a, a big problem. Um, Jalen Sundell's really interesting out of North Dakota State. Obviously, I am a North Dakota State guy, uh, but Jalen played – three years of center and one year of left tackle. And he's, he's right there. Super athlete, uh, one conference offensive player of the year, not offensive lineman, offensive player of the year as a senior in high school, you have to be killing kids uh, at, at tackle to, to get that recognition. But you can see right here, Jalen uh, six, five, 300 just screams green Bay Packer. That's probably not the direction that we're going to go. I don't know that I would use this pick on Michael Barrett. I, I like Michael Barrett. A, a little bit, but um, I'm not super com- comfortable. The, the one guy I am comfortable, and I just think he's Blake Martinez reincarnate. We're going to go a little bit kind of further down their list here, but I'm going to go with Tommy Eichenberg. Um, I think he's a NFL two down linebacker, a guy that'll help you on special teams, can start for you, can be that Blake Martinez type. And um, if that's your third best linebacker, or even your second best linebacker in round four, I'm really happy with that. So Rakestra, Bullock, and McLothern completely redefine what you're doing in the defensive backfield. Um, the offense gets a little bit of help here with a, a new offensive lineman and a running back, but this is really giving the new Packers defensive coordinator the keys to the car and saying, go be great. We love our four receivers. We like our offensive line. We love our quarterback. Here's a new offensive line prospect. Here is, um, you know, Blake Corum to kind of spell in if we don't bring back A.J. Dillon um, and eventually maybe not bringing back eight Aaron Jones, but I, I would love this, especially the playmaking in the secondary. Um, Rake Straw is a dude. Bullock is a dude. Bullock has real ball prote- ball production. I mean, he, he's going to not drop interceptions. Um, might frustrate some people with his tackling, but put good tacklers around him, and hopefully over time it, it gets better. Like I said, if Kalen Bullock could tackle, he'd be a top 15 pick. And, and when you get into round two, sometimes some guys have – um, you know, a couple things that maybe you don't love. Okay. Into this two round mock here. I'm just going to use the control F top pick Troy Fatanu. I think that's very much on the, uh, this is by the way, on the draft wire. Uh, love those guys. Love them. Troy Fatanu, um, to me is a Packers guard prospect really has a chance to be a pro bowl. If not all pro level guard with some tackle flexibility, I don't know that they're going to take somebody that they intend to play at guard in round one, but if they do, I mean, he and Elton Jenkins could, could be pretty special. Um, I don't know if Fuaga was available. I think he's more of a people mover, but a Fatanu and a Jenkins combo there at guard would be pretty special. Or if they really like Sean Ryan, they could move Elton Jenkins to center and Fatanu could play guard with Sean Ryan moving down. Love this pick of Tyler Newbin safety out of Minnesota. Um, really like both safeties. They're the seven. So the five corners that I mentioned earlier, Cameron Kitchens and Tyler Newbin, they're the seven guys that if Green Bay has one of those seven there at pick 25, don't trade down. Just take them. That's that's my opinion. Um, and then finally, a pick that I really like, and that's Chris Jenkins. Uh, he's my top, I think, defensive line prospect. I'd have to look at my board again. He is not enormous like Tavondre Sweat is, um, but probably the best run defender 
on the defensive line in the draft. They call him the mutant. He's going to test well. He's from Michigan, understands playing in the cold. Um, I, I just was coached well in college. I would love to add Chris Jenkins, Colin Jenkins' nephew, Chris Jenkins' son. Uh, I would love to add Chris Jenkins to the Green Bay Packers in any capacity. I think that would be an absolute home run. All right, so check out Mock Draft Monday coming out later today at Packer Report. Check out the uh, Packer Report draft guide or check out the Green Bay draft guide powered by Packer Report. Hopefully we'll have a link in the show description, link on the podcast. Um, we should be able to kind of get you in that direction. And by the way, looking for a 10% discount with code daily. I'm not 100% sure if that's shown up yet, but that is in process. It is part of our plan it is a 10% off the Green Bay draft guide powered by Packer Report with code daily. Check out Mock Draft Monday. Check out the Green Bay Draft Guide powered by Pack Report. Thank you so much for uh, kind of bearing with this very experimental first episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Podcast folks, I hope it wasn't too video-y and you were able to kind of follow along with what we were doing. Um, the, the other ones will just be better with audio. I mean, we're not going to be drafting and thinking and, and going through some of those things. Uh, they should be better with audio. So we'll just get better each and every day. Thank you guys so much for listening and go pack go.